Today you're going to learn exactly how you should move your picking hand and picking arm when you're playing lead guitar. You'll see a wrong way to pick, then you'll learn a much better way to pick so that your playing becomes more fluid, more accurate, and simply faster. Hi, I'm Tom Hess. When I started playing lead guitar, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I was holding my pick wrong, holding the guitar wrong, holding my hands wrong, making the picking motions from the wrong places. All of that caused my picking to feel awkward, made it really sloppy, and it limited my speed on the guitar. It was a real mess. I eventually found a really good teacher who helped me fix all that stuff. Once I made those small changes, everything changed for me, and my playing improved quickly afterwards. Today, I want to share that with you and help you like I've helped thousands of students from around the world. So, let's get started. What you'll see next is an excerpt of a lesson that I taught at a recent HessFest live event. Make sure to watch this video to the end because I share a pretty big secret that most students don't know about why they're making slow progress even when they're taking guitar lessons for a long time. What's happening right now is when you pick, you're actually moving your thumb yeah. like this quite a lot. So this is probably a, a habit which you got, got picked up when you were playing stuff slower. So when you were playing slower, this kind of movement mm -hmm. doesn't seem so bad. Right? So when you're doing slower, this is kind of more manageable. You know, the, the, the problem doesn't really sort of appear in itself until you speed up at the stage where you are now. So what happens when you, when you actually move this joint here is you can only move this so fast, right? You, know, there's, you can only move this joint in and out yeah. at a certain speed. And the speed in which you can do that is pretty slow. So we, we, we want to play this fast, right? Hell yeah. Would that be cool? To rip it up and down the scale? That's the point. Yeah. So we need to get rid of this movement. Okay. So what we would focus on, instead of picking from here, all of this stays just like one unit. So none of this here will ever, ever move. All the movement will either come from your wrist mm -hmm. or in the cases of a string change, from your elbow. Okay. So what I'd like you to try in a second, okay, um, I'm going to demonstrate it first. I want you to watch yeah. my picking hand. Watch the wrist and the elbow. Okay. Okay, so watch what happens when, when I change strings, you'll see the elbow move. Yeah. When I'm on a single string, you'll see the wrist move. Okay, so just, 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 just pay attention to those two, two small things. So, watch here mm -hmm. and here. <laughs> So easy, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's take a scale we know, mm -hmm. and we're going to take it really slow. So what we're trying to focus on is as you do the directional picking through the scale, when you're on your single string, we want to pick through the wrist. Sorry, pick from the wrist. Yeah. And any time we need to do that sweet pick string change, or we're changing strings, it's that elbow movement in combination with a little bit of the shoulder. Okay, so give that a try. So watch your picking hand. Better. So now what we have is, is sometimes you're, when you're string changing, when you're changing strings, you are boot changing with the elbow and a bit of the shoulder now. This bit is good. Gaff tape. Other times when you're picking that extra note that should be coming from the wrist, what you're doing is actually then re-bringing 
your, your, your whole shoulder yeah. and, and elbow back. So what's going on if you just, um, if you come this side of me again real quick? Sure. What's happening is we're going like this. If you see the shoulder and the elbow is always doing this. Okay. So once again, similar to when you move this, you can only move this Hmm. Back and forward so fast. Okay, you can only try and punch something so quick. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's come sit back down again. Sure. And this time, I'm going to go even slower. Watch your right hand at all times. Really important, you always watch your right hand. If we don't watch it, we can't pay attention to it. And I want you to see when you change strings. We want to still do that movement from the elbow slash shoulder that you were doing really good earlier. But now let's just add in that one final element, which is whenever we're not changing strings, we just pick from the wrist. Okay, try that. One quick thing before we carry on. Mm -hmm. It's a little thing you, you can do when you're, when you're working exercises like this. It's going to free up the responsibility of the left hand. Okay, so right now, what I suspect is going on in your mind is we're trying to think of all of this picking stuff and we're trying to remember where our scout notes are. No, it's and, already and because, in my hand, but... Uh, hang on one second. Sure. So because we're also trying to think of where our scale notes are, that means we're not able to focus on this guy. Yeah. When we're not able to focus on this guy, it takes even longer to fix. And we don't want to take long to fix, right? We want to get this fixed pretty quickly, would you say? Absolutely. Yeah? Cool. So here's what we need to try. All we're going to do is just simply pick three chromatic notes anywhere on, on the guitar. You can do it at 7, 8, 9. It doesn't matter where. We're just going to do the same three frets on every single string. I'm going to be tapping my foot. I want you to play in time on my foot. Okay? So... This is the speed we're going to go. Oh, too fast. I know. Now, in this very moment, you have a critically important decision to make. Not, not a decision, a commitment to make to yourself. No, no. no, no. And it goes like this. Very often, when we teach students, we'll take them through a process like this. Maybe not with that specific issue, but any other issue. And we lay it out and say, this is exactly what to do, why we are doing it, what problem it's going to solve, how it's going to solve it, and it works every single time. Without fail, the success rate of solving this problem is 100%. If the student, whoever he or she is, actually does exactly what Dan instructed patiently daily, if you or any other student does that, you will never fail. But most students don't make that commitment. They're like, yeah, I got it. And they go home and they revert to the old ways, maybe not even with, without even realizing it. 
Or they're like, oh, this is so incredibly boring. And they revert back to the old ways. And they come into the next lesson tomorrow or the Wednesday or next week, and it's the same thing. And then what happens is that student, who's paying good money for the lessons, especially if you're taking lessons from you know, a guy like this, Right? I mean, that, this is not free. You're going to be taking lessons from a guy like that on that level, right? So that's going to be expensive already, just walking in the door with a guy like that. All right? So now, what's going to happen is next lesson, we'll pay the exact same money and receive the exact same lesson. So now we pay double for the thing that we got before. And then he lays it all out. He makes the case, lays it all out for you, takes you through the same thing. When I say you, I mean... Students in general, not specifically you. And then the next week, it's exactly the same issue. And sooner or later, what happens is the teacher, in his or her own mind, gives up on you. Because they get he sick of it. would never do that. And in their mind, they're saying, fuck it. Hey, dude, you want to learn a song today? That's what happens. I'm not saying that Dan would do that, but the normal average teacher, if they even know how to fix this stuff, and average teachers don't, but if they did, they're likely to give up on you. And you, students in general, not specifically Paul, don't even realize what just happened. Your teacher mic dropped and left the building and substituted for a alternative version of himself that just teaches you the next ACDC song or whatever, and you go for the next 20 years doing shit wrong. That is how this business works most of the time. Now, if you take lessons with that guy, that wouldn't be the case, but anywhere else, it's very likely to be like that. So, I, I, what I'm saying now isn't really even for you. It's for everyone here in the audience listening, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a student, or whether you're both. It's a critical moment, critical decision in the student's uh, progress forward, advancement. And the student will either do what he says and make fast improvement, rapid, or they'll stagnate, the teacher gives up on them, and 10 years later, they're still doing this shit. Let me know in the comments section what other topics you would like me to make new videos on. If you like this video, subscribe to this channel and hit that like button. If you want to develop lightning fast picking hand speed, I'll show you how in my new free guide titled How to Build Lightning Fast Guitar Picking Speed. It's totally free. Click on the link below to download your copy so that you can develop incredible picking speed even if you've struggled to do so in the past or don't have a lot of time to practice.